And we are back here. We're going to shoot that hole one more time. And uh, the first, the first cut uh, tested the material in the tool, and uh, we found the speed that it that it'll cut at um, somewhere around a thousand RPMs. And I uh, pulled the tool out and I sharpened it, touched it up. Now I got it back here and I'm aligning it um, to the y-axis dot, okay? And that gives me a consistent uh, uh, tool feed and tool angle. Okay, get this uh, back in there. And it's not easy. <laughs> Okay, see where we're at. Get it partially snug. Now I gotta check it. I always uh, maybe even triple check this because uh, this is important. Okay, to have that tool on center, and that looks good. So I'm gonna call that good. So we lift the tool up, flip it back around. And uh, give it a good lock and uh, loosen this lock here. And I'm going to feed that tool in two thousands. And that would be four on this dial. I have to get the light just right. That's about right there. And I want to see what happens here. Okay. Get a little bit of lube in there. This is my beeswax, castrol, molly D, and other cutting fluids mixed to the consistency of grease. <laughs> okay, everything is almost ready to go. I got to get the Y axis centered here. Still not there. Returning it back from centering the tool on that dot, okay? Looks like the camera's still working. Been having a terrible time with the camera. Okay. Lock it up. Not influencing table locks, of course. All right. So, get her in gear. In gear. Fire it up. Okay, it's running about 802 and it seemed pretty happy at that. And I'm feeding it in two thousandths of a depth, which isn't too much. Let's see what happens on this. Okay, lock the clutch. Roll it down. And get it to feed. Well, it's not screaming. doing a fairly good finish. <laughs> now this material is, uh, this part here is uh, some pre-hard uh, 4140 and it's got a piece of soft 4140 uh, welded to it. And I, I'm using this cobbled together thing uh, for another purpose, uh, for support on a milling machine, it doesn't have to be pretty. I'll paint it so <laughs> it'll look okay. But I'm just kind of going for uh, kind of a smooth finish down it. Um, the first cut down it chattered quite a bit. So I think I'll just let this thing run and uh, we'll come back up and uh, I want to speed it back up. Because I think it's running pretty slow. I got it in the finest speed. And uh, it's not doing too bad. But I think I could kick it up uh, at least to a thousand. Uh, 1200 seemed to be too much. 
But I, the last time I was cutting, remember it started squealing and chattering a little bit, and that dulls the tool. And you can see I pulled the tool out, sharpened it, and there's no nonsense going on now. So it's got it. It's sharp. It cut through the old, the old scale or whatever that was on there. And we're through there. So I hit the off button, hit the brake, put it in neutral, back it up. And I'm going to feed that in just um, uh, a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to give it about three, uh, three thousandths so, in feed on it. Now this is a very sharp tool and uh, it uh, has a very little uh, nose radius on it. So I'm going to give it over there. Just about there, I think I give it about right. We'll, we'll see what that cut does. Might be too much. I don't know. But this is, it's kind of fun to explore on different materials. And if you're holding critical um, tolerances, it's really, it's really nice to be able to at least practice on the material that you're going to try to hold those tolerances on. Okay, let's fire it up again. Give it uh, more speed. Okay, that, that, that's a thousand and twelve. Okay, let's bring it on down here. We're there. It's ran just a little bit, but it's, but it's pretty happily cutting along there. Now it's cutting through the softer of the two materials that are joined here. These old uh, jig bore machines uh, really need to be run frequently, and I don't run this frequent uh, enough. But uh, we'll put it through some paces here. I want to bore some larger holes. I have some pieces uh, of alloy steel that have large holes in them, so we can uh, do some dusting out. Now keep in mind, that this is a finishing machine and you don't really want to rough stuff out unless you have to. So, you know... There we go. <laughs> now that's uh, right there. I'm going to back it down. The tip of the tool fail. Okay. So that means on the next uh, run through this, I'm going to have to um, um, back the speed down. Yeah. Yeah, it looks real bad at the back part of the hole where it started squealing. So I'm kind of, this uh, pre-hard here is actually pretty hard and kind of a, I don't know, it's kind of not a high quality pre-hard. It's almost kind of crumbly in a way, you know. Um, you run into a lot of different things uh, with alloy steels. And of, of course on this machine, you're going to be cutting alloy steels most of the time. It, it never makes sense to hold close tolerances on mild steel. It, it very seldom, you know, that's like, uh, uh, you know, 
Sometimes you're better off using high speed steel if you if you have to do that. And there's times I've had to hold closer tolerances on uh, on uh, lesser quality steel. So what we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna pull the tool out and uh, sharpen it again, and we'll we'll run it through again, and I'll back the speed down, and we'll get a clean hole out of this. I, I didn't have a very clean hole uh, to start with when I did it on, on the lathe. And, and that's partly because of uh, the two different materials here, which makes this kind of an interesting challenge for this video, I think. But I'll punch uh, uh, ever larger holes with the machine. And I'll talk about its capacities as we go. Okay, now thanks for having a look at this. And uh, I will be back... Um, with more video, but I'm going to take a break. I've um, really uh, been shooting videos all morning and uh, half of them haven't worked out because the camera failed or something. But it's clicking along right now and uh, everything's working good. So I will be back. Thanks for having a look at this.